as LJ Rich has been finding out. This isn't the inevitable robot uprising. Instead, you're looking at something that's been part of an elaborate advertising campaign. What's happening here is you're mixing video from a camera on the back of this part of the bus stop with some pre-prepared special effects. Get the perspective and the lighting right, and you've got an ad that got 4.7 million views on YouTube in less than a week. Now, for this to work properly, everything the camera sees has to line up directly with this grid. Exact measurements are important because the graphic designers need to know exactly where to put their visuals. The installation itself, though, is quite simple. Along with the camera, there's a 65-inch Full HD screen inside the shelter. That's connected to a single computer running Windows 7. In fact, all the hard calculations for the scenarios have been done in advance, and that took around three months. We've taken some, um, some plate shots of Oxford Street, and we've reversioned that into a 3D world. All of the content that we've created within that space uses the environment specifically for that bus stop. If we were going to roll that out across the 1,500 bus stops around the country, we'd have to go and do that exact same process with all of them. That's where the challenge is, really. <laughs> We worked with Unilever on one of their deodorant brands to make angels appear like they were falling from the skies, landing on the station concourse around users. It was the first time augmented reality had been seen large format. The developers also had to make the videos work in different lighting scenarios, for example, nighttime or here, dusk. It's an incredibly painstaking and elaborate process. As consumers get more savvy about brand interaction, ads are going to get more sophisticated. After all, sharing engaging and interesting videos with others is fuel for our social status updating habit. And if the content is sponsored or not, that seems to come second to whether it's actually any good. On second thoughts, I might uh, walk. need to promote a product, a service, or a thing, then you need to advertise. It's delicious. Quicker, longer lasting relief. It's the most modern shampoo in the world. Here at the Museum of Brands, Packaging and Advertising, visitors are surrounded by products and commercials from a time when social networking meant attending a debutante's ball. Advertisers are finding it increasingly difficult to attract the attentions of audiences. More and more TV viewers are watching on-demand streaming services or enjoying TV box sets in great big ad-free gulps. And there are, of course, the ever-present distractions provided by the internet. So, as more and more TV viewers' eyeballs avoid advertisements, modern-day madmen are devising new ways to make products seem desirable. While the practice of subtle product placement in TV shows and movies has gone on for decades, developers at Myriad have, using technology originally designed for Hollywood blockbusters, given advertisers the ability to change a brand name, or in some cases, an entire product that appears in a program or movie after it's been filmed and edited. One of the great benefits about what we do is we can take a show that's produced, for example, in a US studio um, that gets distributed to as many as two, 200 different markets, different brands can be placed into you know, the show as it airs in each of those different 200 markets. So um, a good example of that for, is, uh, is in Brazil, where we, uh, we placed a Mitsubishi in place of a, of a Bentley in one scene. Some people say it should be the other way around. But actually, we placed the Mitsubishi, which was specifically being launched in Brazil at the time where this particular show was airing. In order to add an object to a scene after it's been filmed, you first need to understand how the camera has moved in 3D space. Our brains are very good at this, but to a computer, a video on its own is a flat and meaningless collection of colours. The techniques pioneered here help computers to automatically understand what's going on in a particular shot, so they know how the camera is moving. Once you know that, you can put the new object in with exactly the right orientation and lighting. 
Product placement is an example of a hidden method of persuasion. However, in some quarters, more overt tactics are preferred. Online advertising can be very specific and targeted. Advertisers can track what sites users have searched for and visited, tailoring ads as a result of the data gathered. TV is now starting to imitate what the online world is doing. And I always say imitation you know, is the most sincere form of flattery. So we must be doing something right in the online world um, because TV is starting to, to go towards making ads more targeted and more personalised. Historically, advertising has always kept pace with the latest advances in technology, whether that's paint or pixels, in order to sell us stuff. And while the method of delivery may change, the message remains the same. We'll be right back after this word. word.